Welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. This is episode number 24. Today we're going to be talking about the Drupal 7 Rules Module. And as always, I'm Shane. You can follow me on Twitter at smthomas3. You can visit my website at codekarate.com and see all the Daily Dose of Drupal videos as well as a whole bunch of other blog posts. And you can also sign up for the codekarate.com newsletter where I will eventually be posting some more in-depth case study videos, but it might be you know a few weeks or a month until I actually get around to finishing those up. But the rules module. We're going to take a look at what exactly the rules module does. Today we're only going to be touching the surface on the rules module. There, it's pretty in-depth, and so I'm going to you know break it out over a few different days here. And if you have any suggestions or any recipes that I guess you have built using rules, you can go ahead and send those to me. And if you want me to show others, you know, some cool things you can do with rules. I'm going to first explain exactly what rules can do and show you just a few very simple examples. In order to use rules in Drupal 7, you're going to need to download the Entity API module. I already have that set up on my test site but you'll need to make sure you have that downloaded. It says that right in here you need version 1.0, beta 9, or later. So rules. What exactly does rules do? Well, you can think of it as kind of like a, I guess, like a conditional actions kind of thing. If this happens or this specific event occurs and it meets this criteria, then you want to perform some type of action on your site. And... I don't if you've used Drupal in the past you probably know about the core actions module. This is similar to that but a lot more flexible. It's really more of a framework than anything and it contains a lot of things that can make your life as a Drupal website builder and even a Drupal developer much easier. So it's it's a little difficult to explain all that it can do, so I'm just going to show you a couple very quick examples. So the first thing I'm going to do is download the rules module. And you can see it contains the a rules admin, a rules scheduler, rules i18n, which is for translations, and then rules. I'm going to come to my test site here. And it's just a basic Drupal 7 test site. I have some content, and I've been using it for past videos, but it's pretty much bare. I am going to go into the modules page and look for the Drupal 7 rules module. And it's going to be down here towards the bottom. You can see there's the three modules here, plus there's the rules translation module. In this example, let's go ahead and turn on the rules module and the rules UI. You'll need the rules UI in order for actually uh, doing anything on the website with rules. It's similar to how Views has a Views module and a Views UI module. So it just separates out the actual interface from the code that runs all the rules. So I'm going to save that. It says I need to turn on the Entity Tokens module. I'll go ahead and hit continue. And I'm going to go through three very simple rules to kind of give you an idea of exactly what's what, what it's capable of. So if I come down to back to the rules, Drupal 7 rules module, I'm going to click on configure and it brings me to the rules administration page. You can see it says here are my active rules and here are my inactive rules. So I can of course add a new rule using this link here or here and we will go ahead and click on add new rule. And if you watched the past episode we built a custom module that just sent an email every time cron ran on your Drupal 7 website. We're going to do the same thing with rules and I will show you why or how it can be so powerful. We spent, you know, I think two episodes before writing that module where this is something we can do in just a few minutes. So we're going to say send email on cron. It builds a machine name for you. We can give it a tag here, and this is just for uh, your own filtering purposes. I'm just going to put it as an admin tag so I know that all my admin rules could be grouped together. And now you have all these different events, and these are the different things you can react on. So if you want to do something specific when a comment is viewed or after a comment is deleted, you could select that event. 
In this case, I'm going to go ahead and say when cron maintenance tasks are performed. I would go ahead and look through these so you can see what's available to you. And some modules will define new events if they integrate in with rules. So keep in mind that, that depending on what other modules you may have, your list could be different. So I'll hit save and now we're on the rules or this specific rules configuration page. You can see the event that occurs, cron maintenance tasks are performed. We can have specific conditions. Those are additional conditions that have to be met in order for this event or this action to fire. And now we can add an action. I'm going to leave conditions blank for now. We'll come back to that. So if I want to click action or add an action, and we're going to go down and take a look at this list. There's a whole bunch of things you can do here. We're going to look at send mail. We're going to try to send an email when this action actually occur or when this event actually occurs so when cron is run send an email and you can specify who do you want to send the email to you could use a replacement pattern here and use the site email address but I'm going to go ahead and just say I want to send an email to shane at codekarate.com and what the subject of the email is going to be. I'm going to say cron has run on and then I'm going to select this token down here and if you're not familiar with tokens they're just little pieces of text that will be replaced based on the settings on your Drupal site. In this case I'm using site name so it's going to be replaced with the name of the site and this is all configurable in the admin section of your site so if I inst if I put this on one site it might say test.codecrowdy.com if I put it on another site it could say codecrowdy.com2 or whatever the name of the site is and then the email message I'm just going to keep it simple I'm going to use two replacement patterns here cron has run on the site name at and then I'm going to say the current date so you can you'll be able to tell exactly what time so Pretty simple. We'll leave the from blank, so it will use a site-wide configured email address. And we're going to go ahead and hit save. So that's a pretty basic rule. If I click back here on the breadcrumb, it's going to bring me back to the rules page. You can see that this is now an active rule. If I come back here and run cron, you'll want to make sure that if you're doing this on a development site, you may not get the email if you do not have your development server set up to deliver emails if you're doing this on your own local system. I do have a blog post on CodeKarate.com for easily setting up sending emails in Ubuntu or other Linux related environments but there's there's a whole bunch of ways you can or a whole bunch of things you can find online for getting your development environment set up for sending emails. So now that now this email should have been sent. So I'll go ahead and check here. It doesn't seem like it came through yet. Okay, so I finally got that email to trigger. For some reason, it didn't send right away. But you can go ahead and you can see that it says cron has run on Code Karate. And then it tells you the date and the time and all that good stuff, just like we told it to do. So if I come back here, you can see that we have the active rule still. We're going to go ahead and disable this. So this allows you to easily enable and disable rules, and then now it shows up in the inactive we're going to go ahead and quickly go through two more quick rules here that we can build. The first one, we're just going to have it um, show message on login. We're just going to have it display a quick welcome message when a user logs in. So I'm going to put a tag on this as user. You'll notice if I start typing in admin, it shows up as an, the admin tag, so it will autofill for you. I'll just put this as a user tag. And we want this after a user has logged in. We'll go ahead and hit save. And we're going to skip conditions again and add an action. 
In this action, we're going to go ahead and go to System and show a message on the site. We're going to use a replacement pattern here for the user's name. So account name. And then say, thanks for logging in. It's very simple, very basic. And we'll want this to be a status message. And we're not going to repeat this message. We can make sure it doesn't get repeated. So we go ahead and hit save. We save the changes. Now I'm going to go ahead and log out of the site and log back in. And it says, my username, thanks for logging in. Very simple. If I come back to the rules page, you can see I still have that show message on login. Uh, the other thing we're going to do is we are just going to go through one more quick one. And I'll probably just make this one up a little bit as I go. Um, We're going to do another show message here, just because that's simple and easy to demonstrate. And we're going to say, when content is viewed. So that means when you're actually going to view content. And uh, what I want to do here is I want it to, anytime a, or an anonymous user comes to a specific content, or piece of content on my site, or a specific type of content, I want to display a message that says... You know, maybe for instance, please log in to join in in the discussion in the comments section or something similar to that. So we're going to add a condition here and we want that the user has a role of an anonymous user. So the, this data selector, and it might seem a little confusing at first, but there are specific types of data that you need to map to the specific user. So we need to select a data of the type user. So we want the site information, the current logged in user, and that's going to give us a user data type, and we want the role to be an anonymous user. So it's going to look at the current user, see if they're an anonymous user, and if it matches, then it's going to pass. So you can see if the con as the content is viewed and the user has a, a role, then we're going to do something we're going to go ahead and just do the same thing we did before just set a message and we could add links here or, you know do things like that but we're just gonna say please log in to leave comments we're not going to repeat it again we're going to hit save we're going to go ahead and add another condition we're gonna say content is of type and we want to only show it on We'll go ahead and say media content. I have a bunch of different content types on my site. We'll go ahead and we'll say article content just to keep things simple because you'll probably have that option. If, if you have other content types, they'll obviously show up here. And we're going to keep this, and it should be already on Node, so that should work fine. We'll go ahead and hit Save. So now, if user has roles and the user is of a specific type, then it should show a message on the site. So we are going to go ahead and make sure I add content of type article. And I'm just going to go ahead and save that. So now I have this test content. Now if I log out, and I come over here to test. It says, please log in to leave content or comments. But if I go to this YouTube video, it does not say that. You'll notice that when I'm on the main home page, it also says that because there's those type of, or that type of content that's showing up in the stream. But if I go to any other actual node page that isn't of that type, of the article type, it will not show that message. So as you can see, that it, we just went through and built three very simple rules. Nothing nothing too extreme, but we're going to go ahead and get into a little more depth in the next few days. If you have any examples of rules that you've built or ideas for rules that might be helpful for new users who are just learning rules, 
again, just send me an email or follow or send me a message on Twitter. Or, you know, find a way to get a hold of me and let me know in the next day or two. And I'll see if I can get it worked into the next couple screencasts. As always, here's my Twitter account information and thanks for watching the Daily Dose of Drupal. We'll be back tomorrow.